So when you learned about Gaussian elimination, or solving linear systems, what you also learned was that if you happen to run into a situation where the current diagonal element is zero, then what you should do is swap that row with a row where there is no zero in that column, and then you can proceed. And the idea behind that is that each of these is a linear system, the order in which you write the linear systems doesn't matter, and therefore you can swap things around. And that, if you then incorporate it into LU factorization, gives you an algorithm that's referred to as LU with partial pivoting. Okay, now, some of the algorithms that we have found so far lend themselves to incorporating pivoting and others do not. In particular, let's say that you've come along through the matrix up to this point and now you encounter a zero there. Notice that you need to be able to access all of the elements below that zero in order to decide what row to swap. Now you don't yet have to have computed those because in the current step you could update this data so that it's available to make the decision. So what does that mean? Any algorithm that moves from top to bottom, for example, the bordered algorithm, or variant one as we call it, where you've only completed this part, has the property that it's very hard to construct these elements right here so that you can make the decision. Same thing for what you might call the uplooking algorithm, the algorithm where this is done and that's done, but nothing below it has been done. The left-looking algorithm, the one where this is done and that is done, doesn't have quite have that problem because you can update the current column to the point where you then have the data from which you can then make the decision. So that algorithm actually does lend itself to adding pivoting, as does variant 4 and variant 5. Okay. Now, what did I just say? What I said was, once you have derived LU factorization algorithms, there are some for which you can sneak in a pivoting scheme. Hmm. I suspect that Dijkstra would not approve. What of course we really want to do is come up with a specification for LU factorization with partial pivoting. We would then want to derive the partitioned matrix expression from that. And we would then want to derive algorithms from the partitioned matrix expression. Turns out, it's actually a little trickier than it might seem. I've done it. I've written it up somewhere. I may have misplaced those notes. And I really should do it again. Maybe I'll get energetic, and if I do, I'll post it. In the meantime, you just need to be aware of the fact that there is such a thing as LU with partial pivoting. Here we have illustrated it in the case where you're just kind of pushing integers around. When you're working with real data and when you're working with real valued numbers, uh, things get more complicated yet because you don't only want to pivot if there happens to be a zero there, but you actually want to always consider adding pivoting. And that's really a topic for a more advanced course on numerical linear algebra, so we're not going to get into the details here. Just be aware.